Hello everyone, welcome to the series on medical emergencies in dental practice. Today I will be discussing about local anesthetic toxicity. So starting with what does toxicity mean? In scientific terms, toxicity is the ability of a substance to cause harmful health effects and in case of local anesthetics or any other drug, when the drug is administered in large quantities, their pharmacologic action goes beyond what that was intended for which results in toxic or harmful effects. The overdose may occur due to inadvertent or accidental intravascular injection, administration of a large dose or a rapid rate of injection. The primary pharmacologic action of local anesthetics is inhibition of excitation conduction process in the peripheral nerves. However, this action may extend to other excitable membranes if the drug is administered at a dose higher than that recommended. Hence, when these drugs achieve sufficient concentration in tissues such as heart, brain or neuromuscular junction that contain excitable membranes, it results in the toxic effects. For example, a minimal level of 7.5 microgram per ml of lignocaine in the brain can induce seizure activity. Now the question comes is, what is the maximum recommended dose that should not be exceeded? I will be discussing about lignocaine here as it is the most commonly used local anesthetic. The commonly available lignocaine cartridge consists of 2% or 20 mg per ml lignocaine and 1 is to 1 lakh or 0.01 mg per ml epinephrine. The cartridge contains 1.8 ml local anesthetic solution which equates to 36 mg lignocaine and 0.018 mg epinephrine. The maximum recommended dose for lignocaine is 7 mg per kg while for epinephrine it is 0.2 mg per appointment. For a healthy adult weighing 70 kg, the maximum recommended dose of lignocaine comes to 490 mg. Now as one cartridge contains 36 mg lignocaine, this equates to around 13 cartridges. The total quantity of local anesthetic comes to around 24.5 ml and that of epinephrine as 0.24 mg. However, in patients with significant cardiovascular disease, a higher dose of epinephrine can produce systemic vasoconstriction, leading to myocardial ischemia. Hence, the maximum recommended dose of epinephrine is only 0.04 mg per appointment. And the maximum dose of local anesthetic containing epinephrine should be restricted to 4 ml or 2 cartridges. Now coming to the clinical manifestations. These can be grouped as mild, moderate and severe depending on the severity of toxic effects. In mild toxicity, the patient presents with confusion, anxiety and talkativeness. There is slurring of speech and increased heart rate blood pressure and respiration. In moderate toxicity, there is stuttering of speech, muscular twitching and tremors. The patient complains of headache due to local anesthetic induced dilation of cerebral blood vessels. There will be lightheadedness, dizziness and visual and auditory disturbances such as difficulty in focusing, blurred vision and tinnitus. In addition, there will be numbness of the tongue and perioral tissues. And finally, as the depressant phase starts, the patient will show drowsiness and disorientation. Severe toxicity presents as generalized tonic-clonic seizures, cardiac dysrhythmia and cardiac arrest. This will be followed by unconsciousness, respiratory depression or respiratory arrest as the depressant phase starts. Now I have talked about a depressant phase that manifests at the end of moderate and severe toxicity. So what is this depressant phase? What happens is, with time, the level of local anesthetic in the cerebral blood starts to decline due to redistribution and metabolism. And as a result, the stimulatory or excitatory phase is replaced by a period of generalized CNS depression. This is called as the depressant phase. The degree of severity of depressant phase is proportionate to the degree of previous stimulation. However, in some cases, especially lignocaine and mepivacaine, the excitatory phase may be extremely brief or even absent. 
the overdose reaction may appear initially as drowsiness and nystagmus leading directly to either unconsciousness or seizure activity now coming to the management part although most local anesthetic overdose reactions are self limiting as the effect decreases over time with redistribution and biotransformation of the drug and subsides as the cerebral blood levels fall below the toxic levels however during the reaction the patient needs to be properly managed the management should start with termination of all dental procedures and placement of the patient in a comfortable usually supine position then the patency of circulation airway and breathing should be assessed and vital signs monitored now in mild to moderate toxicity we should start with oxygen administration the patient should be asked to purposefully hyperventilate as the lowered arterial carbon dioxide tension elevates the seizure threshold of local anesthetic and can be used to patient's advantage anticonvulsants are usually not indicated in mild overdose reactions if required diazepam or midazolam may be administered intravenously titrated at a rate of 1 ml per minute until the clinical signs such as muscular twitching subsides emergency medical services should be called for help if required and the patient should be observed in the office for 1 hour or as long as he or she recovers in case of seizures the patient should be protected from nearby objects and if vomiting occurs the oral cavity should be suctioned to remove any contents this is followed by oxygen administration and drug therapy anticonvulsants such as diazepam and lorazepam are the drug of choice for the management of seizures for patients not responding to benzodiazepines propofol or thiopentol is recommended the basic life support measures should be started if necessary and if the blood pressure remains depressed for more than 30 minutes vasopressors such as ephedrine or iv fluids should be given to elevate blood pressure vasopressors should be used only when the doctor is well trained in their administration and in the recognition and management of complications associated with vasopressors in case of persistent seizures small dose of succinylcholine can be administered emergency medical services should be contacted and the patient should be shifted to a hospital in case cardiac arrest occurs advanced cardiac life support measures should be started epinephrine 1 mg iv every 3 to 5 minutes is recommended in a pulseless arrest algorithm 20% lipid emulsion is recommended by several authors as an effective treatment it is believed that lipid infusion creates a lipid compartment within the plasma that remains separate from the aqueous phase of the plasma and reduces the concentration of local anesthetic in the aqueous phase of the plasma an important point to note here is that use of vasopressin or calcium channel blockers should be avoided so that was all about local anesthetic toxicity however it is recommended to refer the updated and standard guidelines regularly to keep yourself up to date with the emergency protocols in the upcoming video i will take on another medical emergency and its management till then if you found the video helpful and informative then do like the video share it with your friends and subscribe the channel for more such videos also you can download our app for more details and notes on dental and medical topics